Hey everyone, in this video we're going to come back to Latin verbs and specifically we're going to think about tenses again and answer the question, how do we use Latin verbs in the present tense, right? We've talked about what it is, but how do we actually do it? How do we conjugate verbs in the present tense? That's really our question, okay? So to start, <clears throat> we want to make sure that we understand what a verb is and you've seen this graphic a bunch of times so far if you've been watching my videos, but you just want to remember a verb is an action word, right? That's what we're dealing with right now, actions like running, jumping, skipping, raining, whatever it might be, you know, uh, to type, to launch, anything involving an action, that's a verb, right? And you want to remember when we're dealing with Latin verbs, there's three things you want to think about. They have tense, mood, and voice. In this video, we're going to look specifically at tense, right? But uh, what tense is it? What time did it happen? If you think back to a previous video I made, right, about what a tense is, I told you <clears throat> tenses are all about time, right? We're just talking about the timing. When did this action take place? In this video, we're covering the present tense. How do we conjugate it? What do these verbs look like? And how do we spell them? That's really the question. So we want to start with this basic question. Where do we start, right? Where are we supposed to start when it comes to present tense? This is probably the first tense you ever learned in Latin, right? Particularly when you're starting your Latin journey. So you want to think about how do we start? Well, we've covered already that Latin verbs have four pieces when you look them up in a dictionary, right? We call these um, the principal parts, okay? So if you're thinking of the verb audio audire to hear, right? It would be listed as audio, audire, audiwi, auditus, and then you get the English translation to here. Well, which piece are we supposed to start with? Well, when you're dealing with present tense, the only pieces you need are the first and the second, okay? In the English translation, of course. So for our purposes, all we would need is audio and audire, right? That's where we start. You don't need the other pieces. You can pretend they're not there. So if we get rid of them, right, it would look something like this, audio, audire, to here. Okay, and you want to remember the first uh, principal part is the first person singular present tense. So audio means I hear. Audire, the second piece, is the infinitive, right? The present active infinitive it means to hear. These are the pieces that we need to get moving on present tense. Okay, so to start, we're really going to start with that first piece, audio. So if you look at what I wrote here, it's already in the present tense. It's first person singular present tense. So when we're dealing with present tense, this is my first answer, right? Audio means I hear or I am hearing. Okay, so that's the piece that we need. And if you're wondering why we give that to you, again, we already said it's because sometimes the spelling is a little different from what you're anticipating. OK, so we always give you that first piece. But when it comes to present tense, it's always given to you in the dictionary. Right. Audio means I hear or I am hearing. OK, for the rest of them, we go to the second piece. Right. <clears throat> so now we need the infinitive audire to hear. What do we need it for? Well, you might remember from the previous video I made. This is the starting point when you're dealing with present tense. OK, you start with that infinitive and we're going to follow some basic steps to put this verb to hear into the present tense. OK, so here's the first step. When you're dealing with present tense, you go to the infinitive and you drop the RE. This is what we call the present stem. OK, so here's some examples for you. If we had ambulare, my stem is ambula. Audire, my stem is audi. And for sedere, my stem would be sede. OK, that's the first step. Take the infinitive and drop the RE, okay? Step two, we add our endings, right? Our personal verb endings. <clears throat> For the present tense, it's just OST, must, tis, unt, right? O means I, and it's a long O, just make sure you take note of that. The S means you are doing something. The T means he, she, or it is doing something. The MUS means we are doing something. The TIS means you all are doing something. And the NT means they, okay? So the basic step, go to the infinitive, drop the RE, and add your ending. So that doesn't sound so hard, right? Pretty straightforward. Two steps. Easy. Got it. Well, again, it's a little more complicated than that. Okay. So you have to think about vowel changes. And this is where knowing what conjugation your verb is will come into play. Okay. So you want to remember, we said when you're dealing with the present infinitive, right? That second principal part, you look at the vowel in front of the RE to know what group or conjugation the verb is. So if it's an ARE, it's first. Long ARE is second. Those you don't have to worry about, right? There's nothing really crazy. But when you get to the short ERE in the infinitive, that's what we call a third conjugation verb. This is where we're looking right now. You need to make some vowel changes, okay? So if you have a third conjugation verb, you have to make sure that that final vowel in the present stem, meaning the vowel at the very end, right, when you drop the RE, it needs to flip from an E to an I for the second person singular, third person singular, first person plural, and second person plural. So in other words, the you, he, she, it, we, and you all forms. It needs to be an I. 
Then for the third person plural form, they, that I is going to flip again to a you. So look at the example down below, right? Mitere is a third conjugation verb, mito, mitere. If I drop the re, my stem is mite, M-I-T-T-E, right? That's my present stem. The final vowel is an E, right? I flip it to an I. So instead of adding ST mustisunt to the E, I'm going to be adding it to an I. So look over to the far right. It's me tis, me tit, me timus, me titis, right? I S, I T, I M U S, I T I S, right? The I is there. That's the vowel flip I had to do. And then for the third person plural, when I say they send in this case, it flips back to a U. So it's not I N T, it's U N T, me tunt. OK, that's something you really need to pay attention to because there is a change in the vowel. But it all starts with understanding what group your verb is. So you're looking for a verb that has an infinitive of a short ERE like me to write. OK, the next thing you want to think about in terms of vowel changes are third I-O verbs. So these are verbs where the infinitive is a short ERE, but that first person singular has an I-O at the end of it. So an example is here, yaki o yakare, right? This is what we call a third I-O verb. It's the same idea. You're doing the same vowel flip as what we did with third conjugation. The only difference is that the third person plural, right, they, the NT form, is going to have an IU in front of it, right? You're sneaking that I back in. So if we took yaki o yakare, right, we would take the infinitive, yakare, drop the RE, we have yake. I'm going to flip that final E to an I. So it's going to be IS, IT, IMUS, ITIS. OK, at the very end, instead of just putting a U, I need to put an IU. So it's yaki yunt, I-U-N-T. OK, that's the little vowel change that I needed to do because it's a third I over. The last conjugation we're worried about are fourth conjugation verbs, right? So the ones where the infinitive is an I-R-E. OK, here we're not really doing a vowel change so much because you already have an I there as the final vowel of your stem. So what do I mean? Well, if you take a look below, audire, if I drop the RE, I already have an I. It's Audi, right? A-U-D-I. I already have an I there. So I'm not really changing anything. The only thing I'm doing is when you have a fourth conjugation verb, you're putting an I-U in front of the N-T. Really, you're adding a U is what you're doing. But you just have to make sure that there's an I-U in front of your N-T ending. So again, if I took Audi right, I would drop the R-E. Right now I have Audi, A-U-D-I. I would add my endings, S-T, mustis unt, right? So I have I-S, I-T, I-M-U-S, I-T-I-S. For the third person plural, it needs to be I-U-N-T, Audi unt, okay? So again, it's pretty straightforward, this idea, but there are some vowel flips that need to happen, and you need to really pay attention to the conjugation of your verb. That's the most important thing. So hopefully this makes some sense to you, right? We get the idea, feeling pretty good, right? It's just memorizing a couple of rules, right? A couple of patterns, and that's all it is. Otherwise, it follows the same, uh, same process every single time. So let's take a look at some examples, all right? So let's think about how we conjugate these verbs. We have a first, second, third, third I.O., and fourth conjugation verb. OK, so here would be an example. We have ambulo ambulare, to walk. This is a first conjugation verb. How did I know? Well, my infinitive, the second principal part is an A-R-E. OK, the first piece is my first answer, right? Ambulo means I walk. And this is actually a good example to pause, right? This is why I was telling you we give you the first person singular present tense. If I took ambulare and followed my process, I would drop the RE and add an O. I'd get ambulao, which just sounds weird and sticks in your mouth, right? It doesn't sound right. So the Romans shortened it to ambulo. This is why we give you ambulo. You might not really know that um, off the top of your head. So we just give you the first person singular in the present tense. Because again, sometimes it looks a little different from what you'd expect. Either way, let's come back to this example. My first answer is ambulo. That means I walk right? For the rest of them, I take ambulare and I drop the RE. My stem is A-M-B-U-L-A, right? So all of my next five answers have ambula as the stem. Now I just add on my endings, S-T, mustis up. There's no vowel flips, nothing like that, because it's first conjugation. So I get ambulo, ambulas, ambulat, ambulamus, ambulatus, ambulam, right? I walk, you walk, he, she, it walks, we walk, you all walk, they walk. And pay attention to your translation. It's happening right now. So it's I walk or I am walking, right? You're trying to say that's happening right now. What about second conjugation? Okay. That would be an example like sedeo sedere, right? My infinitive has a long ERE in it, makes it uh, second conjugation. Okay. 
My first answer is the first principal part, sedeo. That means I sit or I am sitting. For the rest of them, I take the infinitive, I drop the re. My stem is S-E-D-E, right? So all of my next five answers are going to start with sede. Then I add on my verb endings, S-T, mustisa. When I do that, I get sedeo, sede, sedet, sedema, sedeta, sede. Okay? I just added my endings. Very straightforward. Now we're getting into the more complicated ones. If you want to look at ascendo ascendere, which means to climb, right? This is a third conjugation verb. How did I know? Well, the infinitive is a short ERE, and the first piece is just ascendo. There's no IO in the ending, so it's just normal third conjugation. My first answer is ascendo. That means I am climbing or I climb. For the rest of them, I take ascendere. I drop the RE. That gives me a stem of ascende, right? A S C E N D E. Now I need to flip that E to an I, right? So it's going to be I-S, I-T, I-M-U-S, I-T-I-S. And then for the third person plural, I make it a U, ascendant, right? So I got ascendo, ascendis, ascendit, ascendimus, ascenditus, ascendant, right? I climb, you climb, and down the line. Okay, so that vowel flip came into play. Here, we have an example of a third I over, right? Aripio, aripere, means to seize. Here, we knew it was third aisle because the infinitive, the second piece, is a short ERE, aripere, and the first piece literally has an IO in the ending, right? Aripio, IO. This is what we call a third aisle verb, okay? My first answer is aripio. That means I seize, right? Just take it right from that first part, okay? For the rest of them, I take the infinitive, aripere, I drop the RE. If I do that, that gives me a present stem of aripe, A R R I P E. I flip the E to an I, right? So it goes, I-S, I-T, I-M-U-S, I-T-I-S. Then for the third person plural, they sees, right? I have to make sure it's an I-U-N-T because it's a third I over. Okay, so it becomes aripiunt. Again, down the line, it would be aripio, aripis, aripit, aripimus, aripitus, aripiunt, right? I sees, you sees, he, she, it is seizing, and down the line, all present tense. Lastly, we have a fourth conjugation verb. Okay, so here we have skio skire to know. How did I know it was fourth conjugation? Well, the infinitive has an IRE, right? Fourth conjugation, very straightforward. Okay, my first answer is skio. That means I know. I pull it right from that first principal part. Okay, so skio is my first answer. For the rest of them, I take skire, the infinitive, drop the RE. When you do that, you're left with SCI. That's my stem. Then I add my endings of ST mustisa. Okay, so it's I-S, I-T, I-M-U-S, I-T-I-S. For the third person plural, just like with third I-O verbs, you have to make sure that there's an I-U in front of the ending, right? So I'm basically adding a U. So it's not skint, S-C-I-N-T, it's skiunt, S-C-I-U-N-T, okay? So if we go down the list again, it would be skio, ski, skit, ski, mosquito, skiunt, right? I know, you know, he, she, it knows, we know, you all know, they know. It's entirely in the present tense, Okay. So one way to think about it is this, and this is a sort of an infographic I use for my students. It might be a little hard to see here, but feel free to pause the video. It's just breaking the steps down for you. Anything like this where you can kind of uh, put it into basic steps will help you. But the general idea is really straightforward. You're basically identifying your conjugation. Then the general outline for all present tense verbs is go to the infinitive, drop the RE, and add your endings, okay? But for third, third IO, and fourth conjugation verbs, you have to play around with that vowel, that, that final vowel in the present stem. You have to adjust it a little bit. That's the real idea. So let's do a quick recap, okay? Again, the present tense, actions happening right now, right? I am walking, you are jumping, whatever. To form the present tense, you go to the infinitive, the second principal part, you drop the RE. Then you add your personal verb endings, OST, mostisum. And again, for third, third IO, and fourth conjugation verbs, you just have to flip some vowels around. If you practice this, practice as much as you possibly can. I'd recommend the website Magistrula. Feel free to go for it, right? Practice it as much as you can. You'll get used to it. It gets easier as you go, but it's a pretty basic system with a couple little tweaks. Again, the more you practice, the more you read, the better off you're going to be at recognizing present tense. It's the most common one. It's not necessarily the easiest to use because of these vowel flips, but again, it's all about practice. The more you do it, the more you get repetition from reading, the better off you're going to be. Good luck.